purpose of love being in the center when Paul wrote it was to say, your gifting means nothing without love. Your abilities mean nothing without love. Your talent means nothing without love. Your presence means nothing without love. Then you have to assess, what did it cost you to care? Some people don't want to pay the price to care, therefore they don't care. Now, the word charity uh, is translated in English, love, but the Greek etymological origin is agape. So sometimes when you see the word charity, you put love there, but love described by the uh, Miriam Dictionary is not the same as described by the Greek text. So agape is unconditional or benevolent love. So when he talks about, I have all these abilities and I have no benevolence, I have no uh, unconditional love, I am nothing. You see? And so when you look at people now, a lot of the Christians today are very inimical. And when you're inimical, you're, you have an unfriendly and a mean disposition. There's always something going on cooking under something. You don't, you, you, you're not really genuine in your, in your encounters with people. You're inimical. And a lot of people have that because they don't operate in love. A lot of people who profess to be Christian will worship God and read the Bible, but they don't have love as the locomotive. Love is not the engine. Sometimes ambition is the engine, and you mask it in Christianity. That's why it dies or it needs gas. But when it's love, and love is the locomotive, it changes. Because if, it's, if love is the locomotive, you don't need gratuity. You don't need even people to say thank you. You don't even need people to respond or call your name or recognize you. Because love does not puff itself up. And so when people say, I love you, what did it cost you? Because if it didn't cost you anything, it's not love. Anybody in a marital relationship knows that it costs you. It costs you to love because love is benevolent. So you have to love people when they don't change. You have to be committed to them when they don't satisfy your idiosyncrasies. You said, this is how they're, you prayed night and day and went on three-day fast and consecration and want God to change them, and he absolutely does nothing. And if you love them, you love them for love alone. Love costs you. It costs you. It costs you. And, and love is not fair. Love, it, it can't be fair. See, if, if love was fair, then we would treat people the way they need to be treated because of what they've done. But see, love is not fair. Love, love, doesn't, doesn't even, love doesn't even know how to get back. Love doesn't know how to have vengeance. It, it, it thinketh no evil. Lord have mercy. It thinketh no evil. It, 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 it doesn't even rejoice in people's iniquity. Love doesn't say that's what they get. Love doesn't do that. And, it, and it's so unfair because when people don't respond and reciprocate, and, 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 and you poured out your heart and you're emotionally bankrupt dealing with people and, and you're looking for them to come back with something, give me some kind of response that, that you care or that you know I'm here. And when they don't do it, you can't stop loving them. It's unfair. Love is absolutely unfair. 